let's jump right into it. This joystick base is changing the way I play. If you're familiar with my journey over the years to improve space sim controls, and if you're also familiar with the new features on the Verpal CM3 base, you'll know exactly why I'm excited. But just in case you're not, the new feature of interest in this new base is the clutch and damper. This is going to let us take the best control method for space sims, that is, two sticks, and improve it by allowing the y-axis to be held in place like a traditional throttle. This video is not going to be a review. It is going to contain initial impressions as well as the installation inside of the sim pit. I like to take a longer time when it comes to reviewing new hardware because it takes a good amount of time to really get familiar with new control schemes, so you can expect that at a later date. For now, let's get into the CM3 base and get it installed into the sim pit. The CM3 base has the same footprint as Verpal's other bases. Because I'm upgrading from a Warbird base, that's going to make installing it into the sim pit very easy. The template I made for installing the Warbird base confirms that the screw holes are in the same place. Both of these combined mean I can reuse the same custom mount that I built before. I just need to extract it from the sim pit. To remove the Warbird base, I first have to remove a plastic cover. This is designed to cover the slot so I can change out hardware without having to rebuild the side of the pit every time. Next, I can remove the screws that are holding the plate in the slot. This will allow me to remove the entire plate and the Warbird base from the pit. With the base removed from the pit, I can remove the bolts that hold the Warbird base to it. The CM3 base is a bit taller than the Warbird base, so I'm going to have to use a shorter extension for my custom angle extension in order to keep it at the same arm height. I'll be dropping from a 75mm to a 50mm on the vertical. Removing the metal bottom plate from the CM3 base is necessary to get access to changing the cams. We'll talk about cams a little bit later, but I'm also using this opportunity to make sure that I have the bolt from the bottom so I can attach it to my base plate. Next up, using those bolts and attaching it to the base plate for the sim pit. Making sure to tighten in a cross pattern to apply even force. The base plate can be slid in and then screwed into place. The CM3 base has a detachable cable. However, due to its length and its placement, it means I'm going to have to remove the forward part of the slot as well. Which of course also means I'm going to have to update the plastic cover. Not only because of removing the forward part of the slot, but also because of a raised area where the cable attaches. So, after taking some careful measurements with some calipers, I was able to quickly iterate on the design of the slot cover. That's because it's made of sheet styrene and it's easy to make changes. The other panels in the pit are also made out of this material, although thicker. I was able to extend it forward and cut a notch for the raised area where the cable attaches. I also quickly applied some paint, which I'll touch up later. After all, I've got a base to test. Up next was configuration within the Verbal software. And yes, I am still sticking with the Delta. I just prefer that centered mini stick too much. And I configured all the axes and buttons to my preferences. So, the stick is installed on the base, the base is installed in the pit, and we're ready to start using it. Let's look at how we can configure the base to suit our needs for space sims. The CM3 base comes with a number of cams and three types of springs, soft, medium, and heavy. There are cams specifically designed for space sims, but because of our use case with holding the stick in place, we want to make sure that we have a way of feeling the center, as it's going to be acting as an omnidirectional throttle. It won't be returning to center on its own, so we need to feel where the center is, so that we can be sure that we're sitting at idle. For the y-axis, I've chosen the cam with the hardest detent in the center. This allows me to readily feel the position of the stick as it moves forward and back, and to know exactly when I'm in the center. I'm also using the softest spring on the y-axis. That allows me to move past the center detent easily to transition quickly between forward and reverse movement. 
For the x-axis, I've left the default cam and the default medium spring. I like the feel of this configuration, so there's no point in changing it at this point. Cams and spring tension is going to be something that's different for everyone, though. The clutch, damper, and spring pretension can be further fine-tuned through portholes on the top of the base and adjusted with Allen keys. This makes testing different configurations and breaking in the unit very convenient. The damper can also be adjusted to have a much softer return to center compared to a base that lacks this feature. This can be done to a degree without creating a totally dead stick. I found that by tweaking it just right, it allows for much smoother input and less strain on my arm and hand as I move the stick. Now that the base is installed, configured, and tuned, we can get to using it. As mentioned previously, the main use of such a configuration is to take hands-on stick and stick and make it more like hands-on throttle and stick. This means we have a stick that won't return to center when we release it, freeing up hands for other actions, but without removing any of the hands-on stick and stick parts. That means we still have full control of side to side, sway, and vertical heave strafe. And that's further made better by tilting the stick so that the z-axis is oriented up and down. So far, I've found this to be an excellent hybrid approach. In fact, the clutch feels so much like a throttle, I sometimes have forgotten that I have access to strafe. However, that's not a base problem, that's a me problem, having to relearn how to feel out the controls. What it does allow for is more precise throttle control. In games like Star Citizen, this means less fiddling around with things like the speed limiter and cruise control, and moving more of those adjustments directly onto the control axis itself. This means more buttons are freed up, and it's going to make me revise some of my keybinds. I've already started moving some of them around since I put it in the base only a few days ago. And because it's so good at acting as a regular throttle, we can use it instead of having to have a separate throttle installed if we wanted to use it for those functions, or if we wanted to use it in flight sims. Something that having a stick and stick configuration is made difficult for those types of games because of its nature to return to center. Even from using it only for a couple of days now, I can feel less strain on my arm. And that's just from how smooth the clutch makes the motion. It begs the question as to whether or not I'll end up replacing my other base for my center stick. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this look at the CM3 base and the installation into the sim pit, as well as my first impressions. As I mentioned before, I'll be looking at doing a review once I have more experience under my belt with it. So stay tuned for that. More on the sim pit and, of course, gameplay. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss it.